I came to the University of Montana in 1994 and have been here ever since and been involved with wildland fire research since about 1997 when I stepped on the first fire line that I'd ever been on. So we're evaluating the sling system and looking at variability across individuals. We're using all trained uh, firefighters that are used to using the sling uh, to capture weather uh, and looking at the variability across one another both in terms of their the technique that they use and also ultimately the the end result. How does that end result compare to gold standard measures like the ROS station that are stationed on the fire or out in the fire line versus the Kestrel 5500 fire weather monitoring system. We're using the test score climate control chamber which is set up in our lab and it can control temperature and humidity very specifically to kind of any, any weather you want to set it to. And then inside of that chamber, we have a ROS system that we are borrowing from the Forest Service, as well as a hygrometer provided by Kestrel, which is kind of their gold standard that, that they use in, in manufacturing and testing processes. We have five wildland firefighters experienced collecting weather data. Each of them has their own sling to use. We have eight different environments, so they're going in the chamber eight different times to use the sling. We also have five of the Kestrel 5500 Fire Weather Pros. They're just logging data continually. So once we get all of the manual sling data written down, then we can take the RAWs, the hygrometer, and the Kestrel units. We can download that data, and then we can build the graphs and run the stats and figure out accuracy, and consistency of all the measures. I've been working in fire for 13 seasons now. I'm Amanda Stokowski. Uh, I've worked for the Forest Service for the past 11 years. This is my sixth season in fire. Spent two years on an engine, three years on a hand crew. I'm Zach Long. Uh, I started fire in 2004. Weather is an ever-changing thing, and it's an ever-changing factor and a value in the fire world that we have to deal with on second by second, minute by minute basis. Uh, critical data, if it's something that I need, just like a quick bam, I need it, I want my temperature, I want my RH, and I want my wind direction. Firefighters, by nature, can be skeptical of, of new things that are unproven in their minds, and so to actually you know, have lab test proof is a, a big step and a direction to like, you know, add to that confidence in the um, consistency of the data. I think this testing is very valuable. All we have is anecdotal evidence why Kestrel may or may not be accurate. I think this is, um, you know, in my mind, something that is, you know, long overdue. It's not that firefighters don't listen to science or, you know, can't read numbers like they certainly can. It's just a, a matter of, uh, you know, putting the, the proof in the pudding. We're not going out onto the line with a piece of equipment that we've never put our hands on, that we haven't tested, that we have uh, um, kind of no faith in or no confidence in the data that it's giving us back. I'd be really interested to see the results that you guys are coming out with. The more we can take care of our people out there and the less we can put on them and weight and just everything in general, it's less wear tear on the people. What you notice in figure one is that for the different humidities that were evaluated among the different users, you see a nice tight grouping with the Kestrel system, uh, which shows very little variability at each one of those humidities at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In contrast, the sling, because of the different users and probably their different technique, uh, you see a wider spread or larger variation. Interestingly, the same trend happens at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which approaches the latter portion of the afternoon on a fire when the fire weather becomes much more hazardous. The Kestrel system again shows very tight groupings at all three of these humidity uh, ratings. However, again, the sling system, you get a scatter a spreading out of the data, more variation uh, with the sling system. These data show 
that it's really hard to get reliable repeatability with the sling. Even if you're okay with it not being completely accurate as compared to the standardized ROS system. That means you can't trust the sling for trend data. Although fire crews and firefighters may receive specific training on how to use and report with a sling psychrometer, our data showed that even trained firefighters demonstrate tremendous variability both in technique and in ultimately the end result. Because we noticed that there was variability in technique, which likely led to the spread of, or the scatter of the data with the sling at the different RHs and the different temperatures, we standardized the sling protocol. And even when we standardized the sling protocol, we still saw inaccuracies and inconsistencies as compared to the digital Kestrel system. These current data disagree with the interpretation that the sling system should be used as the gold standard. The current data rather demonstrates that the sling consistently measures inflated RH values compared to the Kestrel system when it's compared to a calibrated ROS system and a chilled mirror hygrometer. 